Hey kids, John here. I wanted to talk about getting to the practice session and some of the difficulties that we may have as trumpet players getting to the practice session itself. Uh, one of the problems we run into is noise. Trumpets are loud. Uh, one of the best investments you can make is a practice mute of some sort. Got a couple, I've got a video on practice mutes, but they cut the volume quite a bit. Much softer. Much softer. Obviously that would be a big help if you live in an apartment. I highly recommend a practice mute that doesn't give you too much back pressure. And there's other mutes you can use for this purpose in different ways. You can use a Harmon mute. It's got to be a good one that gives you the full range of your horn. Low F sharp. Some, pra uh, some Harmon mutes and some practice mutes don't allow you to play to the bottom of your instrument. But a Harmon mute is a good choice as well if you don't have a practice mute. Uh, if you can afford one of the electronic practice mutes, you might look on eBay, get an older Yamaha Silent Brass. I lived in Japan for a couple of years. The walls in Japan were incredibly thin to the apartments. And I, I used a, a Yamaha Silent Brass, the old version, with the box, and I'd play along to CDs, and I could practice through the evening. And uh, I never tried to play open horn in that apartment because, because pretty much everybody for two blocks would have heard me practicing. Not something I wanted to have happen. Uh, one of the things that I think is uh, a problem in apartments is obviously they're thin-walled, and even with, even with, say, something as quiet as a practice mute, you still hear... You'll still hear that through the wall. This is a practice mute in the next room, and this is a wall that I actually built myself. There's insulation in this wall, so it should be somewhat representative of what it would be like to be in one apartment and another. Obviously, you can still hear it to a degree. There's a way to remedy that, and it is to use a mute in conjunction with another noise source. In modern society, we're used to hearing the TV. And when the TV's on, you hear the TV through the wall. You don't pay attention to it. One of the things I like to do is I like to use an adjustable cup mute. You're actually getting a cup mute and you're augmenting your mutes where you've got a straight mute, a cup mute, a harmony mute. So you get a cup mute that can dampen. See, this is a Joe Rawl and they use inserts to quiet the mute. They use this heavy felt insert. Otherwise, it doesn't dampen as much or cut the sound. An adjustable cup, this is a Dennis Wick. And what you can do is you can kind of experiment how tight in you need it. And this one is a trum core. It's also an adjustable cup, and when I say adjustable, that means that you can slide this piece into the bell and make it into a tight cup, okay? And that's what I mean by adjustable. So again, so if you don't have a practice mute, you get an adjustable cup mute, because you can use it for music that you're playing, whether it's concert band, symphonic band, jazz band, whatever, cup mute. Get a cup mute that's adjustable. That's what I do. So now I'm going to go back into the next room, I'm going to turn on the TV, and then I'm going to play both mutes. Okay, so here's the, you know, sound of the TV in the room. That's the sound in the room with the cup mute. So that's the sound of me playing with the practice mute. Now we're going to do the same thing outside the room. Here's the sound of the cup mute. Here's the sound of the practice mute.
So that's an approach you can use if you're living in an apartment or you're living with your family and they just don't want the free concert. It's understandable that at times, you know, people need their space, whether it's family or neighbors. But the TV can help block out a lot of the sound. You can just have the TV going and practice your stuff. If you need to hear yourself better, then what I recommend is using a pair of a pair of earplugs. Doesn't have to be fancy ones like this. It can be the foam ones that you stuff in your ear. And you and you just put the earplugs in while you're practicing and you get bone conduction. If you just put your fingers on your ears like this and close them up, you'll hear what I'm talking about as you speak. The bone conduction makes it sound loud. So if you practice with a mute, you might try earplugs along with it. Then you really can hear yourself really well and you won't overblow and put a lot of pressure on your chops because of the added back pressure or stuffiness that you feel from the mutes. So again, I've talked about in my video with practice mutes, I talk about approaching practice with practice mutes. Be careful not to overplay while using mutes to practice. Now, there are some other choices that you have to try and find a place to practice. So, one of the things you can do if you have a car is park it somewhere in a parking lot, a quiet neighborhood, someplace where there's no foot traffic or uh, drive-by traffic, which could be a corporation parking lot, uh, school parking lot, even a church parking lot and you can practice in the car. Because if you have a car, you've got a practice room. Now churches actually offer a couple of opportunities. So you don't have a car, but there's a local neighborhood church. I would go to that church and talk to them about the idea of being able to practice a couple days a week at the church. Usually they have uh, a church and then a community center or some other building connected to the church like this. And there's probably some space in there at some point in time you could practice. My recommendation is to barter a little bit for the practice space and the time. I would go in and say, do you mind if I practice a couple, uh, couple of days here at the church and then I'll play something every other Sunday or every Sunday or whatever. You work something out and heck, you just gained performance uh, capability by 12 to 24 gigs a year. Yeah, you're paying them by playing to practice. It's a thought and it's an option. So if you have a car, you got a practice room. I like to practice in my car with my cornet because I'm not going to hit the steering wheel. I can stay in the driver's seat. But if you have a trumpet, you can switch seats. So if you actually have a full size trumpet, you got your seat back, you lean it back a little bit, you know, kind of low, right, there, a little bit, and your bell's not going to hit anything. So if you have a full size trumpet, your bell's out to here, you're not going to hit anything as you move around. And the cool thing is you might be able to set your music somewhere on the dash or you'll be able to rig something up. One of the cool things you can do is bring down the visor and you clip your music to the visor. Maybe two clips is better than one, but you know, there's my music. And now I can practice all day long in the car in a parking lot. So it's a place to play if you have a car. If you don't have a car, there are some other options that might work. If you um, have a local music store, you can go in and you can talk to them a little bit about the idea of doing a, a, a practice room rental. They may not go for it, but they might because they might say, yeah, sure, because I don't know what the difference to them would be to rent it out to you to practice for a half an hour as opposed to a teacher to teach for a half an hour. You might be able to find a couple days a week where you can get together with the music store and practice in one of those practice rooms in a music store. That might be an option available to you. Another option you might have is a community center. And community centers rent out rooms for things as well. People do rent rooms at community centers. So 
you might be able to work out a deal with the community center in your in your area to rent a room and practice there once maybe twice a week that may be rather expensive so not sure if that would work for you or not but again if you're not asking the questions if you're not trying to figure out where you can practice or how you can practice it's not going to happen another option is to sign up for an evening class music class at a community college junior college uh, and if you sign up for the class you're probably gonna need a parking pass or whatever but you sign up for the class and you may have to pay there may be some kind of practice room fee you pay to be able to use the practice rooms but this may be the most economical way to do it another option is if you're lucky enough to be able to get to nowheresville and just kind of be in an industrial park or whatever it's possible that in the evenings you can come out and do 20 minutes worth of a range study or something you get a nice little echo now i realize that not everybody in the country has the benefit of being able to wear the aloha shirt in november so this may be very impractical for you where you live but it is an option maybe to some of you. So one other thing you might be able to do is if you have a neighbor that has a garage, you could possibly ask them if you can practice there one or two days a week in their garage. They might be happy to let you do that. So realistically, you've got to be committed to getting to your practice session. It's going to take a certain amount of commitment and it may take an investment, something like a, an electronic practice mute where you've got the earphones and uh, you're not going to disturb the neighbors. You can play along with CDs. You can play along with MP3s or whatever you got because you can plug into them, listen to them as you're playing. And it, that's a real cool aspect about the electronic practice mutes. If that's too much money for you, then you're going to have to find at least a decent practice mute or some type of adjustable cup mute so that you can practice in the apartment. Turn on the TV. Use that as a, as a sound masking device. It'll help out a lot community center, church, music store, local college, someplace out in the middle of nowhere, the car, all of these things might be an option. If you're, if you're creative, you can find a way. And what you do is you take this odd schedule of like, I can practice here one day a week for an hour and I can practice over here for an hour. If you do at least your range studies with the open horn, places that you can practice without a mute, you can get those in a couple days a week and then the rest of the time you can fill with other things like learning jazz soloing or doing technique studies. Break up your practice according to how your week works out. And if you're, if you're rolling into work, you're going to work every morning, you might think about parking the car and playing for 20 minutes in the car open horn in the morning. And maybe at lunchtime, grab 20 minutes in the car. Maybe after work, grab 20 minutes in the car. I know it's very difficult in circumstances where you don't have a place to practice. It can be very frustrating. So you're going to have to get creative. If this is a hobby, you're going to spend a little bit of money on it. If you're trying to become a professional, you're going to have to invest in yourself. You invest in yourself. You buy these things. You keep track of it. Do save receipts, save records of everything you've spent on your trumpets, your mouthpieces, valve oil, music, mutes, the whole nine yards. Students, you can take that off of your taxes, or your parents can, as educational expenses. And professionals take this off their taxes as professional expenses. Anytime you have the horn repaired, anytime you buy anything for your profession, being a musician, that's tax deductible. Your mileage to gigs and back is tax deductible. Sometimes the clothing that you buy is tax deductible if it's used for your job. If you're a hobbyist, you're spending money on your hobby and uh, and enjoy your hobby. Have a great time with it. Till next time, take it easy, kids.